don't take them to those numbers, somebody's going to give you an objection at the end of what we might call a stall. Mm -hmm. There is a plan to win that every time and get it to where it needs to be to be successful. This is probably the biggest piece of content that you shared with me on that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Right. We'll really get them. It's called the Closing Roadmap. Guys, uh, welcome to the front. Chuck Cook. Thank you. I don't know if we can get the screen up or... Nope, it's broken. Is it? Nope. Okay. I can uh, do it without... Hold, so. hold on a second. Yeah. Um, okay. Give me two you, seconds. You start your yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump into something real quick. Somebody asked about how to give the retail price. Somebody was very on point with it. Um, yes, it's when you're given a retail price, there's a thing called price engineering. We paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to find out what we already know, but people do that all the time, right? And, uh, but we had this lady come in. She, we did all these panels and, and, and studies. And what we found is what, we're, what we do is we're going to start with our best. Not only that, is we're going to take the price of that best and just throw it through the roof. We don't want anybody to buy it. It's okay. We just want it really high up here. And then we skip over to the good. We let everybody know that this is whatever, this is all your truck and the trucks. This is what all your contractors this is how we compete with them. But not long ago, we did a study. And what we found is that everybody wants the best. Everybody wants that storm shield, but they want it for the price of the base roof. Thus, the Wagner Pro was born, or, uh, or the, uh, for us at Able, it was the Roof Guard Plus was born. Which one do you think they chose most often? 90% of the time, Roof Guard Plus. Which one do you think we make our most money on? The Roof Guard Plus. And how did we do this? Because everything was pointed to the one in the middle. This one over here was way high. It's price condition. That's the one I scared them with. Then I brought them over here. And what I did with the good is I raised that price within $500 of my Roof Guard Plus. Yeah. Is this going to be this? Okay. Okay. Within $500 of our Roof Guard Plus, and the homeowners always say the exact same thing. Oh, well, that's just a no-brainer. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I had a, a, a contractor, this was about two weeks ago, they uh, flew me out to uh, Florida and they're like, hey, we want to do all retail, we're getting away from insurance. Now that was funny, when I'm in Florida, in the eye of the storm, they're like, we're getting out of the insurance business. I'm like, hallelujah. And he says, we're going completely retail. This is, a, they're over $200 million and they're making this and the, the, uh, the owner is sitting there and he's kind of shaking because he's scared. And I says, this is going to be good. I says, here's how we're going to do this. When you're presenting your price, you have your good, better, and best, but we don't present it like this. We let them know that this right here, they're good. That's what the insurance company is going to pay for. And what we're going to do for you is we're going to give you a free upgrade to this one right here. But you have the opportunity to go ahead and upgrade yourself into the higher package. Now, here's what's nice about this higher package is that if there is ever another storm and that is damaged, that the insurance company has to replace that roof. Not only that, is we will always, no matter when that storm hits, we will always upgrade you with the latest technology upgrades. Every time that that, that uh, shingle is damaged, we will always upgrade you to the latest technology upgrades. So they know that they're always being upgraded. So they've been doing this for just a little while. He says, this is the greatest thing we've ever done. He says, 70% of our jobs are now being upgraded. When they upgraded, what do you guys think happens at that point? It turns into a retail job. Now they want to finance. Now they're, they're using our, you know, our trade partner to guarantee the job. And just like Jim mentioned, they're going to go ahead and, and send you a check later on, but we're going to install this roof in two weeks. Everybody else is still wondering how they're going to get it installed in six months. 
This company is now doing it in two weeks. He says, it's the greatest thing we've ever done. So again, there's all types. Just like Jim said, there's so many different ways of doing it. Now, we know that when we're upgrading people, that you need to know how to sell. You don't need to learn how to sell to sell an insurance job. The sale is done when you knocked on the door and you got them to file a claim. That's where the sale was made. But now we need to sell a job so we can upgrade it to make more money and put them into a better protection uh, type system. That's what we're doing. So we, when we sit down with the homeowner, we're going through everything. And that homeowner looks at you and tells you, you've done a good job. Does anybody in here want to be told that they've done a good job? The only time that I'll ever hear this is when I'm in a, in a room full of insurance uh, specialists that they want to be told. If, you have, if this was a room of retail guys, they're like, no. They never want to be told that they've done a good job. Do you guys know what comes next after somebody says you've done a good job? But I love it. Guys, I'm a bit of a freak when it comes to closing. I, I have researched it. Um, you know, I've traveled all over the uh, United States talking and working with some of the best closers. And we have created a system that is easy. When I first came in, every rebuttal was three pages. It was like Hamlet. You had to learn every rebuttal. I had to learn Hamlet to try and figure it out. And none of it sounded like me. I sounded like a robot. Now it's common sense. We use common sense to cut them down. All the objections, all the stalls, all the excuses that you're going to get. And I get really excited when I'm in a house. And that homeowner looks at me and she says, Chuck, you've really done a good job. And I'm like, ma'am, come on. Don't let me down. And she says, but, and I'm like, it's go time, baby. Let's go. I've been waiting 45 minutes for this moment. Let's go. That, I totally understand, ma'am. <laughs> That's why we give you 30 days. And I am so jacked up when I'm ready for this. Because I really have been waiting 45 to 60 minutes to do this. To get into this. So I was, uh, I was riding with a, uh, a sales rep. Her name was uh, Doris. And uh, still very close to Doris today. She sells bathrooms. Now, in bathrooms, there are these acrylic tubs and showers. Bath Fitter, Rebath, all the BCI brands. Has anybody ever seen any of these? Anybody know what they cost? The lowest is about $12,000. 12000 and all they're doing is giving you a tub, some walls, fixtures. Now, you can go to Home Depot and do it for 1500 So when they're going in and they're selling this, they're selling this at 60 to 70%. 60 to 70% close. So I'm halfway there. She says, uh, Chuck, I haven't been able to see you in the house. And I'm like, Doris, as long as you have everything in the back of this car, I am gang. And this could not have been the worst appointment. This could not have been a worse appointment. We get there, the guy's washing his truck, and I'm like, damn. Now i got to get this guy off of the truck. That wasn't all that hard. Then we're trying to make some small talk, and it, small talk is not easy for me. I do not do small talk. Anybody that knows me knows me that I, I don't talk. I just don't talk much. I talk a lot up here, but you get me off stage and I, I don't talk a whole lot. So small talk's really hard for me. And the first thing that I saw were these little cages in the back and they got all this fur all over the place. I'm like, well, that's interesting. Let's talk about that. Don't talk about anything that you don't know anything about. But of course, I had to step in the mud on this one. I'm like, what are these cages? The guy says, oh, we breed bunnies. I'm like, who the hell breeds bunnies? And, the, and right, there's this little voice behind me like, I used to raise bunnies. I'm like, no shit. 
she used to raise bunnies. I'm like, fantastic, because the only thing I know is Bugs Bunny. So come on up. And they had this whole conversation about bunnies. I didn't know it. There's different kinds of bunnies. I was like, it's a bunny. But uh, they had this conversation. We go in. He's got the bathroom tour out. I can't get to him for anywhere between six, uh, six weeks all the way up to probably three to four months, depending on where we stand. And he already has it ripped out. And so I ask him, I says, looks like you already have it ripped out. He goes, yeah, before we saw you guys at the Dark County Fair, I was going to do it myself this week. I took off vacation. I'm like, this is just getting better. Not only that, is the one that wanted me there was not there, the wife. And then he says, she just got held up at work. She's on her way. I'm like, thank God. So I'm stalling. I'm in this empty room talking about a bathroom that's not even there. And I'm like, so I'm guessing you want your corner caddies over here. And Doris says, you look like an idiot. I says, hey, I was just trying to stall for the, for the uh, lady to get there. Finally, she gets there. I could have just kissed her. Not really, but I could have. She gets there. We go through everything. We get to the kitchen table. We show him everything. We get all the way down. And he says, oh, my gosh, that is way too much. Now, when somebody says that your price is too much, what does that mean to you? Not enough value. Not enough value? What about you? You don't? No one's ever told you that? Man, hire this guy, folks. They're interested. They can afford it. They just can't afford it? I said they're interested. They're interested. They just can't afford it? Okay. What does price too much mean to you? Most of the time, it's just the first thing that they say out of their mouth. It's just naturally to say that. Yeah. It does not mean anything, just so you know. I can go around this whole room. Everybody's got something different to say about price too much. doesn't mean anything. There's two things you can do. You can easily come back and ask them, price too much? This is called mirroring. Anybody ever hear of mirroring? So uh, when I go out and I find my coaches, I go straight to the top. So my coach is a guy by the name of Chris Boss. He wrote a book called uh, Negotiate Like Your Life Depends On It, Never Split the Difference. And the way that he teaches mirroring is beautiful. How he can pull uh, you know, hostages out of a bank using the same tools that I'm going to use in the house. That's called mirroring. The other one is, is quite simply asking, how do you mean? I want to know what that means. I want to know what, man, that was way too much means. And this is what he told me. He says, man, I got a kid that's graduating. I got another kid getting married. Man, this is, I just got so many bills coming out right now. And I says, well, when you had us out, you had to have figured that there was some way of paying for this. Do you mind if I ask what that is? And he, his wife spoke up out of, you know, right behind him. She's stand, still standing at the sink. She says, uh, he's getting a bonus. Man, if looks could kill. I says, a bonus? I said, when are we getting this bonus? And she goes, at the end of October. I mean, this guy put his head down. He was done. And I says, wow. So what you're telling me is if I was sitting in front of you in November and you had that bonus, we would be doing business right now? He spoke up. He goes, yep. And I'm like, man, you should never have said that. <laughs> and so I looked at him and I says, all right. So if there was a way that I could go ahead and I get it all installed now, and I don't need anything from you until you get that money. Is that something that you'd even be interested in? His wife's like, well, yeah, how do we do that? And I'm like, ma'am, I'm glad you asked. I says, we have a trade partner that allows us to do just that. That all I need now is a signature. Literally, you're getting a bathroom from the cost of a pen. And I don't need anything from you. I don't even need anything from you when you get that money. I want to make sure that this is the most, this, this is the, the most comfortable investment you've made all year. I don't need anything from you until today of next year. Do you have your driver's license? Guys, no lie, she threw her wallet at me. I had to go hunting for her driver's license in this thing. We get out to the car and Doris is like, 
Chuck, you're like a fucking magician. <laughs> and I says, I says, Doris, this is the same thing we work on every morning in power hour. I says, you get a chance to see it in the house and it does sound a little bit different. But if you think about it, if it goes back through, then it's word for word. She goes, now that I think about it, it is word for word. It says it just sounds a little different in the house. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. This is not the first person that told me that they're waiting for a bonus or a, a, uh, a tax return or something like that. So it had nothing to do with being too much. It never is, just so you know. Money, I love dealing with money. But before we get into money, I need to think about it. I need to talk to my dad. I need to talk to my son. I never make a decision right away. Anybody hear that one? Oh, no, we're not doing anything today. No way. I've not heard that one before. And I want to get three estimates. I want to get three, three estimates is the new. I want to think about it. If you've been in sales for a long time, it used to be that every trainer wanted to teach you how to, to get by. I need to think about it. Now, nobody really cares much about that one. It's I need to get three estimates thanks to, uh, what's the, uh, I can't remember the radio personality, but he's like, oh, you always got to get three estimates. Now the BBB says you got to get six. I don't know if anybody saw my podcast with, with uh, Dimitri, but he had a whole thing on the BBB total, you know, it was like a total right cross for me. I had no idea what he was going to do. Yeah. Yeah. But we were always taught that these are objections. These aren't objections. These are stalls and excuses to get you out of the house. That's all this is. Stalls and excuses to get you out of the house. People don't get estimates thinking, hey, we'll get the estimates this year and we'll actually get it done next year. There are some weird people out there that might do that. There are two people that you cannot sell, broke and stupid, and you can't... You don't even have the right to decide which one. You know, but you don't have the right to determine either one. So the first one, I need to think about it. Guys, this one is easy. Remember, all we're doing is taking it to money. We are not selling a roof right now. We're not selling the upgrades. We're just taking it to money. Just so you know, if I can get that homeowner talking about money... I still have a track record today. I have never walked out of a house unless it was a uh, check, cash, uh, financed, whatever. Now, I've taken a lot of checks that didn't cash, and I've taken a lot of bank turndowns. <laughs> but in 20 years, if I can get it to money, I am walking out with a decision. I need to think about it. Hey, I totally get it. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, that's why we give you 30 days. You'd be able to make a decision within 30 days, right? And they're like, well, yeah, how long will it take you? Oh, we'll know by Friday. Wow, you guys are really serious about this. Guys, I don't care if they say, yeah, we're probably going to do this sometime in 2026. Wow, you guys are really serious about this and try to keep a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the system that you want? Yeah. And are we the company that you trust to have it installed right the first time? Oh, of course. So I'm guessing that when the time comes, guys, if I say anything about today or, or they think I'm talking anything about today, buyers become liars. But if I can make it in the distance, all of a sudden they're, gonna, they're willing to tell me the truth. So when the time comes, I'm guessing the only thing that's going to hold you and I apart, it's going to be the money, right? And it's funny how they all look at you know, like, yeah, it's like, damn, this is good. It's so, it makes things so easy when you can get them back to money. Mr. and Ms. Smith, usually when I hear that it comes down to money, it's one of three things. It's either value, you don't see paying what we're asking. It's affordability, you just don't know where the money's going to come from. Or it's timing, you're waiting for a tax return, a bonus, or something like that. Which one is it for you? Which one do you think I get most often? Everything but value. Why? 
Why is it that they don't typically go to value? And that's their get out of jail free card. Understand that it's the path of least resistance. Nobody likes confrontation, right? Well, it's easy to talk about affordability because if you do, I got you. And if you go to timing, as long as you got good credit, I got you again. But let's say that they look at you and say, well, yeah, it's really just the affordability. Okay. So it looks like it's either going to be the monthly payment or the down payment. Which one is it for you? It's going to be the monthly payment. Okay. So I see here it's about $450 a month. Is it the fact that you just can't afford the $450 a month? Yeah, that's like a car payment. Okay. So you can't afford the $450. What could you afford? And I'm going to start throwing suggestions, leading them. Like what, three, three fifty? I know because I've already seen the numbers that I can do anything above two fifty. Yeah, I can do three. Gotcha. Okay, so what you're telling me is that if I can do three, and I don't know if I can, I'm gonna make a quick phone call. But if I can do three, that we're gonna go ahead and move forward? Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna make a quick phone call and I'll be right back. I'm going to go call my wife, see what's for dinner. Then I'm going to come back and say, hey, I'm going to let them know that you've impressed on me that if I can get this thing around three, that we can go ahead and move forward. Am I correct? Yep. I've done better than that. I brought you down to 250 and you've impressed on me that if I can do it, we're going to move forward. All I need is your driver's license. You got your driver's license. I am not asking for the order again. I, I actually asked for the order about 10 minutes ago. Now we're just closing it down. So um, let's say that, um, well, let's, let's keep going on these. So I need to talk to my dad. Anybody ever get that? It's a younger couple and somebody has to talk to their dad. Get them on the phone, right? I know they've got questions for me. Let's go ahead. Let's get them on the phone. And they, uh, it's for whatever reason, their mom or dad's never happened to be available. And I don't know what it is. In almost every one of these cases, I ask them, you know, hey, let's go ahead and get the dad. Oh, no, he's a uh, truck driver. We can't get a hold of him. I'm like, don't they have those little Britney Spears mics that they can't talk to me? And that's what you're thinking. And it's like, oh, OK, I get it. I, I totally understand. You know, hypothetically, let's just say that we can't get a hold of your dad for a couple of months. You got to get this thing done. How do you personally feel about spending $22,223 on this project? Oh, that's a lot of money. It's money, baby. We're bringing it back to money every time. I'm not selling a roof anymore. I'm selling money. That's it. That's how you close. All this crap about get them and just keep asking them. Ask them five times. How many times have you guys actually had to ask for an order five times? How many? Absolutely. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You've got to ask them five times. If you have to ask them five times, quit because you suck. <laughs> the next one. I need to talk to my son. And this is usually an older couple. Tread lightly here, folks. Why do they have to call their son or daughter, whatever? Why? What is that? The house, the house might be in a trust. Okay, it could be. That's one. Taken advantage of. Taken advantage of? Who actually thinks they're being taken advantage of in this case? The son. The son. Why? Because you're taking his inheritance away. <laughs> so when they say, hey, we need to get our son involved. Oh, I get it. I know he's got questions for him. Let's go ahead and get him on the phone. If they pick up the phone and they actually start dialing, that's a good thing. Then they really do need to talk to their son. Many times they'll say, oh, we can't get a hold of him. He's, uh, he's in California, whatever. Oh, okay. You know what, ma'am? My, my mom and dad do the same thing to me. Every time they do a home improvement project, they call me. And I always ask them the same three questions. You know, is, will this solve your problem? Will this new upgrade, will it do exactly what it is you're looking at for it to do? Oh, of course. 
great. Do you trust the person sitting across from you? And I'll throw them a smile and they'll laugh because I'm about to hit them with the right cross. Have anybody know Gary B? All right. He talks about hitting people with the right cross. It's things that they're just not expecting. So I'm going to ask him that, uh, you know, do you, do you trust the guy sitting across from you? And I'll smile like, oh, you have been so good. Oh, man, that's fantastic. And can you afford it? And shut up. She's about to go through a women's lib moment like you guys have never seen before. You know what? You're right. It's my money. I can do it however I want to do with it. And now you're thinking, you go, girl. <laughs> now, after you've signed the contract, after you've gotten their upgrades, be very careful at this point. Man, before I leave, I know that you're about to have this conversation with your son. How is that going to go? And that is as far as I go. I'm putting it into her head that she's about to have an uncomfortable conversation. Right? That's all I'm doing. I do not go any further than that. It is absolutely unethical to coach her through that conversation. I'm just throwing it out there. And many of them will say, I'm not saying anything until the roof's on. Okay, your, your choice. Now, I never, t I never make a decision right away. We don't do anything on the same day. This used to be a two-page script. This is how we, this goes. Oh, I totally get it. I buy things too. You know, I, I totally understand. So, hypothetically, there are dramatic pauses that you use throughout these, this process. Hypothetically, if I could do something with these two numbers, and I'm pointing to the monthly payment and down payment, if I could do something with these two numbers, would that potentially help your decision-making process? And shut up. Guys, curiosity kills this cat every single time. What do you think I get? What? That's, a, that's the only answer. It's the only answer. Well, what could you do? I'm glad you asked. And we're back to money. I want to get three estimates. Now, there's a right way to do this, and there is a very wrong way to deal with this. There are um, people out there that will teach you to tell a homeowner, say, oh, we, we've got that covered. I have your three estimates. It's a good, a better, and a best. You just told your homeowner that they're an idiot. I tried that once, and the guy came across the table at me, and I swore I would never use that again. And I keep seeing these YouTubes pop up that that's a good idea. And then you research, and he's like, that guy's never been in the house. Because if he would have, and he used that, he's going to have the same thing I got. A really mad homeowner. Because it's blatant that you just told him they're an idiot. Nobody likes games, guys. No one likes the games. The, this other thing, uh, we're going to reduce to the ridiculous. Once again, one of the dumbest things you can do in a house. For just a cup of coffee, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, we can get this. He's not that stupid. He knows it's going to cost more than a Starbucks cup of coffee to put a roof on a house. The other thing is, is he doesn't get it daily either. And that's when, again, when I say it's really dumb, it's because I've tried it. We were all taught at one point. So, I want to get three estimates. This is the only one where it's a bit of a lengthy script. And I have to explain something to you first before we get into this. And that is what we call a price and value guarantee. Now, we want to shut down shoppers. I want to get three estimates. We want to shut down shoppers during our presentation. And at the end of our presentation, we show them, we ask them if they have any questions, and then we let them know that one of the big reasons I'm with this company is this page right here. We now call it our pledge. That's only because so many contractors are using it. So we call it a price and value guarantee. That's what we've called it for years. And we let them know that not long ago, the owner of our company decided that they wanted to change the way that people bought home improvement. 
wanted to bring peace of mind back into the home improvement buying process. And how he's done this is he's allowed you to go ahead and take advantage of all the incentives and discounts that we have available while I'm here. And then you can have the opportunity to shop us out until the day of the install. Mrs. Smith, has anybody come out here and told you that you have the opportunity to shop them out? She goes, no. So is that the peace of mind you were looking for when you first called Abel Roof? And these people are like, yeah. I mean, they're like in this euphoric state. They're like, yeah. Guys, we are four thousand. I have never been less than $4,000 more than any competitor. 4000 is the lowest we have seen when we are going up against other companies in the, uh, the Columbus, well, all of our locations. So when we tell them, and we have people all the time like, have you ever had anybody challenge it? I said, yeah, twice. Twice. And I had this guy come in. He, said, he comes up to the uh, secretary, and, uh, and uh, she phones me, and I come out of the back. And I said, sir, what's going on? He says, your uh, sales rep said that I had the opportunity to shop you out, and we found somebody, and I wanted to, to uh, give it to you in writing. I said, fantastic. We take this very seriously, and we do. We absolutely take this very seriously. And the first thing I did when I looked at it, I said, wow, are you okay with this quality? I just asked a simple question. The guy was like, well, uh, I, mean, I mean, that's why I'm here is because we, we want you. I was like, this is too easy. I didn't even look at it. <laughs> and he already answered my question. But. Buyers want to win, right? So I'm going to give him a win. I say, obviously, in my mind, obviously, with your reaction, there's no apples to apples, but obviously, it's not apples to apples. However, we are going to go ahead and give you the $100 for the fact that you went out and shopped us out. The second thing I'm going to do is I want to buy this estimate. And he looked at me, and I said, I'm going to buy it for 100 bucks. That's $200 off that price. He goes, the dude was so happy. He was asking me for $5,000 just a minute ago. Now he's happy with 200 He walks out. My secretary's like, why'd you do that? I said, you didn't think I was going to let him leave with it, did you? There's no way I was going to let him leave with our, the other estimate. We do the same thing when we are in those dollar magazines. We put our, put our ads. Well, we've been in the dollar magazines for so long, I can pretty much tell him where I want my ad. I says, where's Feasel at? I'm like, oh, it's page, you know, three. All right, I went on the front of that page. And she looks at me and she goes, you're not going to make me do that. And I'm like, yeah. I went on the front of the Feasels page. She goes, okay. So when we go out and we say, hey, where did you hear about us? Oh, it's in the dollar magazine. Our sales reps are trained to say, do you mind going and getting that dollar magazine for me? I just need the number that's off of it. She goes out and gets it. The first thing he does is rip out that page. What's on the back of that page? Feasel. And it's going with me. <laughs> so when we deal with the, I, need, I, I want to get three estimates. I don't care what they say. Oh, we've got a couple people coming out. There's like 20 different ways of them saying this. And so when we get, I need to, to uh, talk to three other people. Hey, I totally get it. You guys seem like smart shoppers. How long will it take you to get the other estimates? Oh, we'll know here within two weeks. Okay, great. So within two weeks, we have all our estimates. You put them all out on the table. What criteria are you going to use to pick which contractor you want? Which one, what do you guys think I hear all the time? Price. Oh, price. So you don't really care about the quality. You don't care about the material. You don't care about who we have to actually install that material? Well, no, 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 we, we want everything that you asked for. Okay, so is it, okay, is it safe to say that it's value that you're looking for? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Great. So at the end of this, you felt that, that, that Abel has the best value. Can you see being a customer of Abel? Of course, okay. I want you to understand, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, that you're always going to be able to find somebody who can do it cheaper. They just not, you're never going to find anybody who can do it cheaper and still be able to do it right. Do you remember me talking about the price and value guarantee? 
And they're like, yeah. So you understand that you have a, up until the day of the install to continue to shop us out and check me out. Yeah. Do you think that we would put our money where our mouth is if we haven't already done our homework? And it's usually the husband's like, yeah, I get it. So if the investment's fair and the investment's flexible and everything else looks good, what does another contractor have to tell you that I haven't already shown, told you, or, or let you ha handle? Nothing, I guess. Then let's go ahead and get this thing taken care of. Let's go ahead and check off that to-do box. You have up until the day of the install to see if, if uh, you can find any, anybody out there that can do anything close to what we have. Do you have your driver's license on you? That works. There's a company out of... Uh, he says it's worked three out of the last three times, and he's only had it for two weeks. I says, man, that is fantastic. He says, every time we go in, we use that, the uh, closing roadmap, we train on the pivot points. Guys, I wrote those pivot points to mimic everything that you're seeing here. Everything that, you, that is inside those pivot points is right inside of this. Can you go to the next slide for me? So let's talk about money. Why? Is money so easy to get by? Why is money so easy to get by? If somebody mentions money, they are willing to what? They're willing to spend, they're willing to buy, and they're willing to negotiate, right? When I first got into this industry, or the home improvement industry, I had a mentor, his name's Jason Hott, shared with me something I will never, ever forget. He said, just remember... The person with the most options wins. So when I'm going into a negotiation, I always have options. So let's just say that uh, if, I was to, if I had my pricing and I was going to give the pricing to the homeowner, and I knew that I had some more money to give, I'd give a price, where, do I, where can I go from there? I can go to my next price, right? If I go straight to my bottom, I give them my best price, where am I going? home because there's nowhere else to go give yourself the options give yourself those options if somebody says yeah chuck it's it's just value it's uh just i just don't see paying i just don't see paying the uh, uh 20, 20 some thousand dollars i just started working with the amish now that's a trip just so you guys know there is no technology. I have to travel out, and I even have to go to the bathroom with horses when I'm there. I mean, this is, this is like third world stuff when I go out. But I love everything that, that we've done, mainly because if you've, I know that you were there. Uh, they came, they had to drive because they can't fly. They had to drive to Texas. And there's this guy that I've been working with for a couple of months. His name's James Fisher. When I first started working with him, he was 18 years old, and I sat down with him. I said, all right, go ahead. I want to see your price presentation. He was shaking so bad he couldn't even talk. He was shaking so bad he couldn't even talk, knowing that he had to give me the price. Today, the guy averages $450,000 a month. Not only that, is when they give a price, now it's, they only sell standing seam metal roofs. They do not do the, the corrugated metal, any of that junk. And uh, so when they give a price, they're about $40,000 more than everybody else. Only reason is because the owner took me at my word. I told him, I says, once we go through this training, you can raise your prices. I just didn't think he was going to raise them that much. <laughs> but James took it as a challenge. And no, no lie, he is closing this over and over and over. I had two calls. He had, he had three calls today. He already closed his first two. And he's anywhere between twenty dollars and $40,000 or more than the next guy. Twenty to $40,000. Now, here's what's funny. He sat there and told everybody how he does this. And I, I still have people asking about it. 
But someone says, oh my gosh, it's way too high. How do you mean? Man, I, we've got some of these other guys and they're, they're way, way less. Really? Tell me about it. Now we're in a competitor's cheaper. It's no longer it's too much. Now we entered into a competitor's cheaper. That's why we ask. He says, well, let me ask you. Let's just say that you put both of those on the table next to each other. They're both the same price. Which one would you go with? And I'm in the house. Not at that particular one he was talking about. But the one that, that few that I went out with him. The homeowner says, well, if you guys were the same price, I'd definitely go with you. He goes, really? Why? And I'm, I, was, I was like a proud dad. I was like, this is fantastic. And the guy's like, oh, we love your warranty. We love how you crimp the edges. I mean, guys, there's metal roofs and then there's a Stormy Ridge metal roof. I'm telling you, the price they pay is worth every penny or char- price they charge. He's going through it and he goes, well, why else? And he gets a couple more and he goes, and what else? He's like, no, no, that's it. All right. So he goes back through it and he says, isn't that worth the extra $45,000? And I couldn't even keep it. I had to look down. <laughs> and the guy's like, well, I think I can probably come up about 20. And I'm like, really? I'm like, all right. And he, he looks this guy straight in the face and he says, so it looks like we're only about $25,000 from each other. The guy says, yeah. He says, how long will it take you to come up with the rest? <laughs> Guys, this is what this is. <laughs> $25,000. The guy looks at him and he says, it'll just take me a couple of weeks. And I'm like, I'm looking at him like, that is probably the furthest distance I've ever seen that work. $25,000. We started at forty-five. dollars He got it to twenty-five dollars and closed it with simply asking, how, how long will it take you to come up with the rest? And it's an Amish guy. Couldn't use technology. He had to measure everything himself. I had cougar paws on and he asked what they were. He's like, those look really cool. I says, you need some. So let's just say, though, they's like, yeah, there's just, that's just not what we were thinking. Okay. So now we're going to stair step them up. Okay. It is not time to justify your price. And I know that if any of, I'm going to say 90 to 95% of the roofing industry, probably home services industry, take out the windows guys, would justify their price. Well, sir, didn't you hear all about my warranty? No, he was daydreaming at that moment. He's not going to tell you, yes, it's going to hurt his chance of negotiation. Stop justifying your price. It's not going to work. So where we go is, so Mr. and Mrs. Smith, before I came out here, where did you think this would be? I'm at, say, 20000 Like, well, we really kind of thought you'd be closer to maybe fifteen. Okay. And after I came out, and now I'm going to pinpoint on some stuff that they have already mentioned that they like. Now, after I came out, and I showed you the, uh, the technology upgrades, you went ahead and chose an upgrade upgraded system and then you really like that warranty where are you at now and they'll look at you and very seldomly is it like a gift from god and they come all the way up to the price yeah you're right that floors me when that happens it not very often but they'll come up a few thousand i i mean we could probably come up to about 17 so it looks like we're only about $3,000 from each other? Yep. All right. How long will it take you to come up with the rest? And shut up. Anytime you want something from the homeowner, you put it in their court and leave it there. We do not throw them a lifeline. 
I don't care if it takes them five minutes to answer you. No matter what it is, you put it back in their court and you leave it there. Affordability. We already covered that. If they say that uh, the, pri- the uh, payment's too much, remember, I'm always going to give them a high payment. I always want them to have a problem with the down payment and monthly payment. Why? I can negotiate those and it doesn't affect my paycheck, right? I can negotiate those and it does not affect the profitability whatsoever. But if I jump in and say, what, you can't afford the $25,000? Well, now we're talking about something I do not want to talk about. If it happens to be the, the down payment, well, what, what could you give me down today? I could probably give you about five, and I'm needing ten. We always want half down. I can probably give you five. Okay. And when do you think you can get me the other five? We'll give the, the other five when you guys drop material. Okay. So can I go ahead and put that in the uh, work order? Yeah. Fine. Those are easy. Those are easy. When you get down to timing, we already talked about timing. When I'm going through that whole story about Doris, does anybody, did anybody hear me talk about the word financing at all? Guys, that's the F word for us. I don't even want to mention it. Don't even want to mention it. Uh, so we, uh, we just let them know that we have a trade partner that allows us to do that. That they give us the opportunity to go ahead and get it installed now. And I don't need anything from you until you get that money. Is that something that you would even be interested in? Homeowners will fall all over themselves. That is nothing more than a 12-month no-no. Uh, moment still does it. I know that there's a couple others that still do it. I know a lot of the financing companies, they're going to risk-based, but uh, there are a few out there like Moment. Um, I know uh, Chris Scoville is coming out with something new that has a really nice no-no with it. Uh, but there's a lot of different options out there. Any questions on any of this? It's a 12-month no-no, no interest, no payment. So they don't have to give us anything. They just have to give the bank something in 12 months. Yeah. Before I jump into this, so I get a phone call. Anybody know 